Hi. One of the most important uh, and difficult topic is talking about personality. Because the main aspect of personality probably is it is uniqueness. So how can we understand the uniqueness dimension of personality? Maybe Gordon Alport help us to answer this question. Gordon Alport is very important psychologist. He is the first psychologist who study personality in scientifically. He wrote the first important book in psychology about personality. The title of his book is Personality a Psychological Interpretation. This book was published in 1937. Before that, psychology uh, personality was a neglected topic uh, in psychology. After uh, uh, Alport published uh, this st his study, psychology got attention from other uh, psychologists and psycho uh, personality became uh, a legitimate, uh, important uh, study subject in the psychology. So uh, Alport, he really uh, made uh, great contributions to the study of personality. When we look at the general aspect of Alport's approach to personality, we see that uh, Alport uh, basically doesn't pay too much attention to the concept of unconscious. According to Alport, uh, unconscious doesn't occupy an important place in the development of personality. Uh, maybe unconscious relatively and limitedly is in, maybe influential uh, in childhood period or maybe in some neurotic cases. So Alport focused, uh, emphasized consciousness rather than unconsciousness. This is a very important difference between Alport and Freud. And the other important point Alport is making, in according to Alport, past uh, doesn't important doesn't occupy an important place in our life. Present and future is important. Alport said that people are busy. Uh, to make plans for our future, for their future. But psychologists, they are just, uh, they, they ignore their engagement with the present and future, but they, they are just always studying past, past, past. And he said that, no, as long as individual breaks, it is his or her, her own ties or relation with the past. Individual is getting more mature and more healthy person. And Alport said that if we want to understand human personality, pathological cases, neurotic cases, uh, They are not uh, representative human personality. So we have to study or we have to look at the mature, healthy, normal human person. So Alport, when he look at the human personality, he consider human personality 
as a dynamic organization. By dynamic organization, human or uh, human personality is is not something fixed. It is always uh, changing. It is evolving. So, uh, considering human personality as dynamic organization, as an as an entity which is always in the process of becoming, is very very important idea in Alport's theory, and of course. Uh, Human personality has psychological as well as physical system. So by saying this, he said, we, when we study psychology, uh, human personality, we can't just uh, uh, depend on biology, human body, or psychology, because human personality has bodily dimension as well as psychological dimension. So psychophysical unity is another important aspect of uh, Alport's theory. And of course, when Alport talks about personality, he talks about characteristic behavior and thought. By saying Every individual has characteristic behavior and thought. He means that every individual is unique. So, my thought, my behavior, it is my characteristics. It is just unique to me. So, this is a very important idea. So, that means that human personality is an entity which is changing. It is dynamic, and it is. Uh, we have to understand human personality as a psychophysical totality, and at the same time, we have to focus characteristic. Uh, uh, we have to focus on our behavior on thought as something as something unique uh, to us. So. When Alport talks about uniqueness of individuality, uh, he said that every individual has his or her own particular uh, aspects, characters, qualities. And Alport use very special terms for these particular aspects uh, of human personality. This concept is trait uh, aspects. So what are what is the traits? Traits means they are our distinguishing unique aspects which guides our life, which guides our behavior. And of course uh, our unique trait, uh, they are constant part of our personality. So there is a continuity in our trait. So Alport doesn't talk about uh, trait as something uh, temporary. So. The main aspect of trade is continuity rather than uh, discontinuity. And of course, what forms our trade? It is social, environmental, and cultural influences. So, uh, Alport also uh, also doesn't talk about biological influences. He doesn't say our personality is the production of our biology or heredity. He said that our personality uh, is 
under influence of social, environmental and cultural influences. Yes, we have traits, we have many qualities, uh, they belong to us, but every trait which we have, they are not the same. Some traits, they are just specific to us, unique to us. This trait I mean, we, we are not just sharing these traits with other people. The traits which are just peculiar to us, uh, unique to us, Alport said that these traits constitute our personal uh, disposition. So individual traits is equal to personal disposition. Of course, this trait in our personal character, in our personality, all this trait doesn't occupy a central place. There are some traits, they are very powerful, they are very dominant and pervasive in our life. So the most pervasive, the most powerful traits in our life uh, have been called by Alport as cardinal uh, trait. For example, some people, they are very compassionate. So, if compassion occupy a powerful place in people's life, so that means that uh, compassion is someone uh, cardinal trait. On the other hand, there are some important aspects which manifest our personality. For example, some when we talk about some other people, when we are, we are saying this people is very aggressive, or this this people is very quiet person. So, I mean, if there are such a group of traits which help us to, uh, to distinguish people from others, so that means that we are talking about central traits. And of course, there are some other traits only people uh, who are very close to us, they could know these traits. For example, uh, some people like drinking tea. Uh, some people like maybe drinking tea, but uh, which kind of tea we are talking about. But a close of friends knows that we like uh, green tea. So, this aspect is uh, secondary traits. And of course, in our personality, we have, have habits. When we talk about habits, or Alpur talks about habits, he said that habits, they are inflexible, they are fixed responses to, to something, uh, to external uh, stimuli. For example, brushing your teeth. I mean, you eat something after dinner, meal, or lunch, or breakfast, uh, and after that you said that uh, I need to brush my teeth. So, brushing your teeth is a habit. Yes, uh, 
And also Alport, of course, he is also very important social psychologist. He talks about the concept of attitudes. Attitudes are important, occupying important place in our personality like traits, but there is a difference between attitudes and traits. Attitudes, according to Alport, they are they have a specific object of reference, and we are making a positive or negative evaluations about uh, this specific object of reference. So, uh, our positive or negative evaluation uh, determines of our attitude. As we said, he, Alport, talks about human personality as an entity which is dynamic. Uh, according to him, human personality focused on present rather than past. So, in order to lead our personality to the future, in order to evolve our personality uh, dynamically, Alport talks about motivation. According to him, we have functional uh, autonomy of uh, autonomy of motives. Uh, what does it mean? This that is it means that mature adult person shows behavior uh, which are independent from childhood experience. So cutting your tie with your childhood experiences is the functional autonomy of your motif. And we have also perseverative functional autonomy. This level autonomy uh, is about low level uh, routine behavior. For example, eating, drinking, and so on. It's basically it's about our biological uh, needs and satisfaction. And also Alport talks about what we think of, about ourselves. He said that we have uh, we have uh, values, we have self-image, we have lifestyle, and all these uh, values, self-image. Lifestyle, it is, he called all these things, appropriate functional autonomy. So, if we have, if we constantly cut our ties from childhood, if we, uh, if we, uh, if we are striving to be, uh, adult person, if we motivate ourselves to satisfy our daily routine needs, and if we construct self-image, values about ourselves, that means that we, we are building a personality for ourselves. So, Alport is using the concept of proprio. So the concept of Alport doesn't use the concept of ego or the self. Alport just, he is using the concept of proprio. 
so of course having uh, being or becoming a mature adult, adult person is not easy is not just happening uh, in one time it is a process Alport is talking about seven stage the first stage is about bodily self actually the first three stage is happening in the first three years these are bodily self self identity and self esteem let's start with bodily self uh, basically in bodily self level infants they are aware of their body they they are they have ability to distinguish uh, their body uh, from other objects so they are aware that they have they are bodily autonomous person let's put it in this way and the other aspect is self-identity. Children realize that they are growing, there are many changes happen in their uh, bodily structure, but they have personality. Their personality is there. Their identity is there. I mean, they are aware of themselves. They, their uh, identity uh, remains intact and the third level is self is esteem self esteem children they are taking pleasure they are proud of they are taking pleasure from their uh, accomplishment they are proud of their success they say i can do that because i am valuable person i have a self i mean they have the sense of self esteem so Bodily self, self identity, and self esteem, all these level happens in uh, in uh, the first three years. And the extension of self, the fourth stage, and people, uh, children, start to realize that there are people. There are objects that are important in their life. And they say, this is my friend, this is my family, this is my brother, this is my close friend or playmate, or this is my uh, special toy or whatever. So, uh, they are relating their person identity with other people, with other objects. So extension, they are always extending their self to outside. And the other fifth stage is self-image. Uh, children develop real or ideal images about themselves why they try to develop such images because they they know that their parent their family has ex have some expectation from them in order to satisfy their parental expectation or family expectation they say uh, they construct uh, some images about themselves and of course in this uh, uh, stage six their rational ability uh, develop and children uh, um, use their rational ability thinking ability in order to cope or overcome the difficulty and problems they are facing and the fifth stage 
sorry, seventh stage uh, Alport is talking about is appropriate striving. So stage seven is adolescence period, and in adolescence period, young adolescent people they start to uh, make plans. Uh, long-term plan for themselves. For example, they say, which university I am going to uh, go, what sort of university education I am going to get, or what sort of job I, am, I want to do, or what sort of girls or boy or men or women I want to marry. What sort of family uh, I want to have? So they are making long-term plans about uh, education, about job, about family, and so on. So after this seventh stage, Alport talks about ad adulthood period. In Alport's theory, adulthood period is more important than childhood period. He said that adulthood period is normal, mature period. In this period, people can live as a autonomous people, they are living, they are developing a life which is independent from childhood. They, they live a rational life uh, in present and they are making plan consciously and uh, consciously and rationally uh, for future. And he used very interesting metaphor, actually, three metaphor. He said that uh, when you planted a tree, at the beginning, uh, tree needs its seeds. But when tree grows, when tree has branches, so... Uh, Grown tree doesn't depend on its seeds because trees start to nourish itself and because it has branch, it's very grown tree. So individual is, yes, the seeds of our personality is in childhood, but when we become normal, mature adulthood, that means that we are no longer dependent on childhood. We can nourish, we can develop, we can uh, improve our personality. So, when Alports talk about uh, this uh, adulthood, mature, normal adult, adulthood, what he means? I mean, who is mature, normal adult. This is a very important person. So mature adult person, he is not a selfish person. He uh, has a sense, he has an understanding uh, to, uh, to reach other people, to do activities for other people. So Adult person is someone who goes beyond himself or herself. Who is someone who can reach other people. So this is something, a challenging task. So adulthood for Alport is a challenging experience. And adult person uh, is someone who has feelings of intimacy, compassion, and tolerance to
towards other people. So this is very, uh, these are very positive quality. And the mature adult person, he is someone who could accept himself or herself as he, he is or she is. Mature adult person is not someone who is in war with himself or herself. That's me. That's me as I am. So self-acceptance is important because when individual accept himself or herself as he is or she is, that means that uh, he or she is gaining emotional uh, security and stability. Mature adult person is a realistic person. He knows, he or she knows what he could do or she could do or what she, he, could, he or she couldn't. So, realistically, they, they evaluate uh, their capacities, their skills, and according to this realistic evaluation, uh, they are doing uh, their uh, jo job or they are making choices. And also, mature adult person is someone who is has a, who is uh, who has a sense a sense of humor, who uh, who is someone who could talk about himself or herself uh, as an object. So self objectification. Uh, is another important aspect of mature personality. And also mature adult person has a unifying philosophy of life. So ha having a unifying philosophy of life, that means that uh, in the light of this philosophy, philosophical framework, individual is leading himself or herself toward the future. So as we see, Alport is talking about, he's talking, he's talking about human personality, normal human, mature human personality, as, as an entity which has functional autonomy. So, Alport said to us, yes, your childhood experiences are your reality, but leave them behind. Be adult, be mature, grown up, look at the future. So, that is a very important message we are, get, we are getting from Alport. So, Alport thinks that life is not about to escaping or reducing tension or challenges, escaping challenges and problems from our life. But he said that life is about Tension. It is about sensation. So when we have a challenge, we must motivate ourselves in order to respond to this challenge. So when we motivate ourselves to respond to these challenges, that means that uh, we are renewing, we are improving uh, ourselves freely and creatively. So, Alport's personal, Alport, uh, message to us, you are unique being, you are free being, and you are creative beings. Thank you.